Today, we are going to review units 10, 11, and 12 for the test. Let's begin with unit 10, lesson A, page 99. Page 99. Okay. Please take one minute to read the grammar chart. Read this right here to yourself. Take one minute. Teacher, can you repeat the page? Page 99. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. All right, beautiful students. So in this lesson, Unit 10, Lesson B. We talked about catching up with old friends using the present perfect and present perfect continuous. And we also practice the use of since, for, and in. I'm going to write a sentence and you tell me if it's present perfect or present perfect continuous. I've been eating healthy for six months. Is that continuous or simple? Continuous. Continuous. Continuous, correct. This is a present perfect continuous sentence. And then I've been eating healthy for six months and I've lost... 10 kilos. Okay, I lost 10 kilos. This is the present perfect simple or simple present perfect, right? Some people just say present perfect. Some people say simple present perfect. Some people say present perfect simple, but they're all the same thing. Which sentence describes a process, sentence A or sentence B? Sentence A. Sentence A, very good. The present perfect continuous is the process. And the present perfect simple is what, guys? The, the result, yes. All right, good. Now, in this lesson, we also practice since, for, and in. Remember that we use since to refer to a starting point, the point when something started. 
For example, I've been eating healthy since, let's see, right now it's September, August, July, June, May, April, and March. I've been eating healthy since March. Okay, when did I start eating healthy? March. Okay, so we use since for the starting point. We use for to refer to the duration of an action or event for the duration. You know, how long? Five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, one week, two weeks, three months, five years like in the original sentence, right? I've been eating healthy for six months. How many months? What's the duration of me eating healthy? Six months. And then we use in to refer to the duration of an action or an event in negative sentences. In negative sentences, okay? And this usually only works with the simple present perfect, not the continuous form. For example, I haven't eaten, I haven't eaten junk food in six months so for six months in six months both are to refer to the duration but in is for negative sentences and only works with the simple present perfect or present perfect simple or just Present perfect, you know, it's the same thing. Present perfect, simple present perfect, present perfect simple, it's the same thing. So on the test, on the test that you're gonna have tomorrow, you're gonna have this wonderful question. This wonderful, wonderful question. A common question. What have you been up to what have you been up to all right this is a extreme this is an extremely common question when you find a friend or see a friend that you haven't seen in a long time What have you been up to means what things or what activities have you done recently? That's what it means, no? What activities have you done recently? Or what activities have you been doing recently 
But nobody says these questions. They're correct. But nobody says them. People say, what have you been up to? All right. What have you been up to? What activities have you been doing? What activities have you done recently? I'm going to give you my answer. Real information. What have you been up to? And I'm going to use the present perfect continuous. Fernando, what have you been up to? Well, me, I've been working. Making videos and watching Walking Dead on Star Plus. Everybody, I want you to write a, well, I want you to write a response to this question using real information and the present perfect continuous. Write your answer to this question. Use the present perfect continuous and real information. Do you understand? Yes, teacher. Yes. Yes. Fabricio, Raina, Samantha, do you understand? Yes, teacher. Yes. All right, you have two minutes. Samantha, did you hear me? Yeah, teacher, sorry, my computer reset. Okay, okay, so you understand the activity? No, I don't hear the instructions. All right, I, I didn't hear it's the past. Okay, I didn't, I didn't hear. hear the instructions. Um, okay, so Sam, do you see this question? What have you been up to? Yeah. Write your response to that question using real information and the present perfect continuous, okay? Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Remember beautiful students, the present perfect continuous, you have for the present perfect continuous, you have to use the subject plus have or has, then been, and then a present participle, verb ing. Remember, I, you, we, and they goes with have. And he, she, and it go with <clears throat> has. Oh, my God, my throat is dry. So, obviously, in this sentence, on your response, you're going to use I have or the contraction I've. I've, I've, I've. Then been, and then a present participle. Adriana, what have you been up to? I've been studying, learning English, doing homework, and making friends. Ah, wonderful. I love that for you. Zoe, what have you been up to? Um, I've been studying, doing my homework, reading a story, and watching the house on Disney Plus. Nice. You've been reading stories. Yeah, well, actually, I'm drawing. I've been drawing. Ah, okay, okay. Mr. Mendez, what have you been up to? Um, I've been doing my homework, studying, and playing. Nice, nice, nice. Raina, what have you been up to? I mean, make my homework, um, making music, and um, watch TV. <laughs> watch or watching? Yeah. Wait, what you mean? Yeah, it's watch or watching. 
Mm, um, watching. Watching, yes. All right. The, the first thing you said, um, you've been what? Homework. I've been doing homework. Okay. I've been doing homework. All right. Right now, I'm going to ask you the question again. Answer it using the correct grammar. Okay. Raina, what have you been up to? I've been doing my homework, making music, and watching um, TV. Good. You make music? Wow, you're an interesting yeah, person. Well, well, I compose, but the instrument, I don't do much. <laughs> oh, my God. Nice, nice. Juan Gabriel, Raina Juan Gabriel Aguila. Good, good, good. I say Juan Gabriel because he was one of the best music writers, one of the best composers in Mexico. And Fabricio, what have you been up to, buddy? I uh, studying. I've been a student every day. Uh, doing exercise, uh, watching movies in English and Spanish. Wow, man. Good. Thank you. Javier, what have you been up to? I've been training, studying the solar system, and uh, play video games. Wow, wow. Studying the solar system. Javier, what's bigger, Earth or the sun? the sun all right good good and samantha what have you been up to i have been studying making exercise watching movies and maybe a little bit um of reading a little bit of reading nice now the only thing is making exercise we don't make exercise we do exercise so I've been doing exercise, okay? Okay. One more time. Let's try one more time. Samantha, what have you been up to? I have been studying, doing exercise, watching movies, and maybe a little bit of reading. And a little bit of reading. Good. Everybody, good job. Adriana, did I ask you already? Yes, it was the first. Ah, okay, okay. Good, good, good. On the test, you're going to have a question like this. All right, before you give me an answer, I want to tell you something. So this is the formula for the present perfect continuous. Subject, have or has, been, and then the present participle. You did a good job. This is the present perfect continuous, PPC. Then we have the subject plus have or has plus past participle form. And this is the present perfect simple or simple present perfect. Remember what we talked about at the beginning, the present perfect continuous is for the process. The present perfect simple is the result. So, I've been reading books all year. Is that a process or a result? Process. 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 And I, a lot of new words. I have been learning. I have learned. Or I have been learned. 
What is the correct Has answer? Learned? Very good. I've learned a lot of new words. Now, of course, you could also say, you could say, I've been learning a lot of new words. So A and C are both correct, but C talks about the result. And A, that means it's still happening. And well, on the test, try to have one process and one result, just like here. Okay, class, one process and one result. One more example. Carlos, A, B, or C? A. A, very good. Carlos has been waking up early every day. Yes, this is the structure of the present perfect continuous. Wonderful. Actually, two more, two more questions. Let's see how you how you can do. Let's see how you do. I haven't spoken to Carly. In May, for May, or since May. Since? Since, exactly. Since May. Now, I know what some of you are thinking, but teacher, it's a negative sentence. Why not in? Oh, yes, you can use in for negative sentences. But remember, in is for the... Duration. We use in to refer to the duration of an event. May is not a duration. May is a month. Remember, durations are one month, two months, three months, four months, a week, two weeks. Okay, But May is not a duration. May is a starting point. And we use since to, to refer to a starting point. Yes, sense can be used in negative and affirmative sentences. All right, the last question and we will go to the next lesson. I haven't seen you ages. Class, for, in, or since? For. Mm -mm. In. in yes why in because it's a negative and um have a duration very good ages is a duration when somebody says in ages it means in a long time yes so i haven't seen you in ages is the equivalent to i haven't seen you in a long time okay 
good, good, good. Any questions? No, not teacher. Okay, if you can remember the questions that I showed you right now on the test, you will be okay. Let's go to the next lesson. Page 101. This is unit 10, lesson B. And in this lesson, we were talking about our favorite movies using already, still, and yet. Already, still, and yet. Let's begin with already. We use already. Let me let me change it. I don't like the passive voice, not for this. We use already to show that something has happened before we thought it would happen, okay? So it's something we didn't expect to happen, it happened. For example, I've already watched La Huerpana. So it, can you tell me a movie that you've already watched? Or you don't watch movies? A little. All right, let me, let me, get, let me ask another person then. Adriana, tell me a movie or a series or something that you've already watched. Um, maybe, um, Caroline? I've? I've already watched Caroline. Okay, nice movie. Me too. I've watched it like four times already. Good, good, good. Let's... Go on with still. Number two, we use still to show that something continues up to the time referred to. All right, for example, I still haven't watched La Huerfana. Um, Raina, what's a movie that you still haven't watched? What is it still? Still, um, aún. Mm. Well, nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You watch everything. Yes. All right. Quien como tú. All right, Samantha, can you give us an example? Mm. 
Um, I still haven't watched the movie of Minions. Okay, I still haven't watched the Minions. Repeat to me, Sam, watched. Watched. Very good. Now read the sentence again. I still haven't watched the Minions. Very good. All right. And yet, this is probably the most complicated one. We use yet. We use yet in a negative sentence or in a question. It is often used with the perfect aspect to show that something has not happened by a particular time, yet is placed at the end of a sentence or a question. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like still, it has the same meaning as still, but we usually write it at the end of a sentence. So instead of saying, I still haven't watched like what for now, I can say, I haven't watched La Werfana yet. Or I haven't watched the Minions yet. Have you watched Telefono Negro? Yeah. Yes, I have. No, I haven't. Fabricio, have you watched Telefono Negro yet? Uh, I haven't. Okay. Watch it. No, I no, I haven't. It's just like that. No, I okay. haven't. No, I haven't watched it. Uh, Telefono Negro yet. Ah, okay. You want to say the whole sentence? There's nothing wrong with that. No, I haven't watched Telefono Negro yet. Cool, cool. Well, that's all. On the test, you're going to have questions about yet still and already um you're only gonna have two questions about it so it's gonna be something like this one i la 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 haven't heard that song a already b yet or c still still, still. Good, good, good. Remember that we use still before haven't. We use still before haven't and hasn't. Number two, already or yet, be already and still, or C, still and yet. And before you answer, let me tell you a little something. We use already before the main verb and at the end of a question or sentence. For example, I've watched, I've already watched Caroline. You can also say, I've watched Caroline already. You can put it at the, at, at the end or after have or has and before the main verb 
The main verb is watched in this case. So remember, we can write or we can use already at the end of a sentence or before the main verb. So number two, what is correct? A, B, or C? Well, A. Good. Have you heard that new song already? Have you heard that new song yet? That's correct. Questions? Uh, teacher, when do you use uh, already and Jet only one only use when it's negative, right? Yes, yet in in negative sentences and questions. Okay. Yes. Yes, we uh, use yet in negative sentences or questions. And still in, only in sentences affirmative. No, 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 no. Look, look. We use still at before, haven't, or hasn't. So still in the present perfect is for, still in the present perfect is for negative sentences. Okay, okay. Okay. Okay, okay teacher, thank you. You're welcome. If you can remember these two questions, you'll be okay. Class, any questions before we continue? Oh, all right, well, let's continue then. Page 109. Unit 11, lesson A. Here we're talking about speculations or making speculations with modal verbs. All right, remember we had five. Must can't, could, may, and might. But may and might are basically the same, except that may is a little more formal. So first let's talk about must. When we use must, it's like saying, I bet. You know, we're like very certain very certain about what we're gonna say. Can't means it's not possible. Could means it's possible, maybe, maybe, maybe. And may and might means maybe, maybe, you know? Remember that all of these are modal verbs and we had two different types of structures here we had the subject plus modal verb plus base verb or subject plus modal verb plus b plus present participle All right, now that lesson goes really well with the next lesson. So I'm gonna combine them. Unit 11, lesson A and B. In lesson B, we talked about ING and ED 
adjectives. ING and ED adjectives. Remember, we use ED adjectives to describe feelings. Remember, people have feelings and some animals have feelings. And then we use ING adjectives to describe people, places, and things. So class, what's correct to say? I'm tired or I'm tiring? I'm tired. I'm tiring. Tired, yes. Remember the pronunciation like this, tired. Repeat to me, tired. Tired. Okay, repeat it, everybody, repeat it to me. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. Okay, my day was tired or tiring? Tiring. My day was tiring. Very good, my day was tiring. Why is it not correct to use tired to describe my day? Why is it not correct to use tired to describe my day? Because it's a feeling. Very good, because your day doesn't have feelings. All right. Basically, I'm tired because my day was tiring. I'm bored because my, no, let's see, my class is boring. Mm, I'm exhausted because my day was exhausting. I'm annoyed because my brother is annoying. and things like that, okay? Now, I said that lesson A and B are really good, well, are great to use together. Do you remember that lesson where we practice you must be and that must be to try to guess um, what people are feeling or how people are feeling. <clears throat> Which expression do we use to guess people's feelings? You must be, or that must be? You must be. You must you be, must good. Be. So you must be plus active... ED or ED adjective. And you must be plus ING adjective. All right. So class, let's use the words from here. Imagine that I enter class, you know. I come into class and this. What guesses can you make about me? You must be bored. Okay. 
you must be bored. Good. What about this? Mm. Mm. Ugh. What about that? You must be annoyed. You must be annoyed. Now, let me tell you about some situations. Okay, remember, you're going to use that must be to describe the situations. You can use these adjectives or any adjectives from here. Okay, remember, to describe situations, you're going to use the ing adjectives. Okay, are you ready? Remember, you're going to make a guess using that must be. So class, yesterday I was walking with my friends and I stepped on a rock and fell. Everybody was laughing at me. That must be embarrassing. 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 Very good, very good. Embarrassing. All right, guys. One more situation. I want to learn new words, but I have terrible memory. I hate my memory. You must be frustrating. You must be? No. Talk, well, I can be frustrated, ED. But we're talking about the situation. So that must be frustrating. Frustrating. Good, good, good. All right. Class, one more situation. My mom is taking me to the book club again. She knows I don't like books. I don't like reading. And she's taking me again. Ugh. You must be angry. Okay. And what about what that must be? Anything? That must be annoying. That must be annoying. Good. Good. All right, let's go. On the test, you need to be very careful. Remember, after these modal verbs, do not use Two, I repeat, do not use to. It's must and the base verb. Can't, base verb. Could, base verb. May, base verb. Might, base verb. No, to. I'm going to say some sentences incorrectly and you correct it, please. 
Adriana, correct the sentence. You must to be tired. You must be tired. Very good. So wait, correct the sentence. That can't to be correct. That can't to be correct. Correct my sentence, please. Zoe, are you there? Yeah, yeah, it's thinking. That can't to be correct. That's too... No, can't is okay. There's nothing wrong with can't. That can't to be correct. That can't be correct. Very good. That can't be correct. Excellent. No twos. No twos. And also, no verb ing after the modal verb. Okay. So you must be ying? No. You must be? Yes. You must feel? Yes. You must feeling? No. It's the modal verb and a base verb, no matter what. Okay? Sometimes the base verb is be, sometimes not. All right, guys. Bored and boring. Bored, boring. If I want to say something about a movie, am I going to say the movie was bored or the movie was boring? Boring. Was boring. The movie was boring. All right. Now. Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King was interesting or was interested? Was interested. Why? I am not saying that he feels interested. No, 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 no. The correct answer would be Martin Luther King was interesting. Because I am describing him. I'm describing his personality, his behavior, his person. I'm not describing his feelings. Okay. Franco Escamilla is interesting. I-N-G. Because I'm describing him, not how he feels. Class, what is correct? Bella Porsche is interesting or interested? Interesting. Interesting. Good, good, good. Bella Porsche is interesting. I'm describing her. All right. Class, Bad Bunny. Bad Bunny is interesting or Bad Bunny is interested? Interesting. Interesting. I'm describing him. Now how he feels. I'm describing him. Do you have any questions about this lesson? Well, these lessons. No. Okie dokie. Well, let's go on then. You stub your toe, you break your can. Teacher. Yes. One question. Um, we don't use interesting when we don't talk about the feelings. Right? Exactly. Okay, okay. Exactly. Interesting is for people, not feelings. And maybe places, maybe things. The book is interesting. 
Um, Ricardo Salinas is interesting. Samantha Valencia is interesting. Francisco Javier is interesting. Eric Mendez is interesting. He is a chess champion. Raina is interesting. She makes music. Right. Adriana is interesting. She's a ninja. Unit 12, lesson A, page 119. In this lesson, we're talking about the simple past passive. Now, I'm also going to combine lesson B because, well, they go hand in hand. Remember, remember the formula for this. I, I think the formula, if you can remember the formula, you'll be okay. But first, let me write a sentence. Guys, can you give me an example of a natural disaster? Earthquake. Earthquake, right. The building was completely destroyed by the earthquake. Now, remember, we use the simple past passive usually to talk about the news, right? To talk about the news. What's happening in the news? What happened? And we use it to focus on the person or thing that received the action. Remember, the subject is passive. That's the reason why it's called the passive voice. The subject is passive. In this sentence right here, the building was completely destroyed by the earthquake. What is the subject? The building. The building, yes. How do I know? Well, the subject always goes before the verb in sentences. Not in questions sometimes, but always in sentences. And the verb is was destroyed. So before was destroyed, we have the building. The building is the subject and the building is passive. Why? Well, the building didn't destroy something. The building was destroyed. Something destroyed the building. In this case, the earthquake destroyed the building. So remember this formula. Passive subject plus was or were plus an adverb sometimes, not all the time, you know, like partially, completely, totally. Um, what else? Badly and severely. And then the past participle. And then by agent, if the agent is important, how do I know it's important? Well, if it's nature, it's important. If it's a name, it's important. And if it's an organization, it's important. So for example, I'm not gonna say, um, the cake was eaten by them. By them? No, that's stupid. We're not going to use by them. Them is not an important word. It's a pronoun. Now, remember, pronouns are not important. Unless you want them to be. But that would be weird. Now, I could say the cake was eaten by Carlos. 
Okay, Carlos is important. That's a name. The cake was eaten by the Patriots. Okay, that's an organization, a football team. I could also say the cake was destroyed by the strong winds. Again, the strong winds, that's nature. Remember, by and the agent is optional. We only use by if the subject is important. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Only use by plus agent if the doer is important. The doer is the person or thing that does the action. Carlos, the Patriots, the strong winds, those are doers. They do the action. The earthquake is a doer. It does the action. It destroyed the building. A, a similar word to construct is build. Build in the past is built. Build in the past participle is also built. Which sentence is correct? My apartment was builded, my apartment built, or my apartment was built? A, B, my or C? My apartment was built, C. C, good. My apartment was built. It cannot be B because that would be my apartment built in, 20, in 2005. But an apartment is not alive. It cannot build because it's not alive. It can't be A because builded, that's not a word as far as I know. So the only answer is built. I have another question for you. I, la, 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 the house with my family, A, B, or C. B. B, good job. I built the house with my family. This is not passive. This is active. Why? Because the subject is I. And I am active. I built the house. The house received the action. I did the action. It cannot be C because yo fui construido la casa. Makes sense. Doesn't make sense. I was built by who? I'm not a robot. Or am I? Nah, I don't think so. I have a heart. It's a big heart. Okay. One more.
grow in the present, grew in the past, and grown in the past participle. What is the correct answer? Letter B. Letter B. The vegetables were grown in California. All right. Also, remember this. The city was completely destroyed by the tsunami. Remember that if you're going to use an adverb like completely, you need to put the adverb after was or were and before the verb in the past participle. Yes, that's correct. Put the adverb in the middle of the two verbs. Does that make sense? Any questions? No. All right, class. Well, we are finished for today. Tomorrow is the test. Thank you for your patience, for your dedication. I'm gonna send the video in a few hours. Um, study. Remember, the least you could do is read the grammar charts and watch the video again. If you have any questions, send me a message, okay? I'll see you tomorrow, guys. See you. Have a good day. Bye-bye. You have a good day. Bye. Bye-bye.